They did leave the plastic on here for me to peel, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Oops, probably should have done that with the screws on. Hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a pre-built computer, something that I haven't dabbled in too much on this channel, and that's mostly because I'm perfectly capable of building my own computers. With that said though, I do understand that not everyone is interested in building their own computers as much as they are in using them as tools. Or maybe some people might be interested but they're too intimidated by it. So they'd consider going the pre-built route, at least for their first PC anyways. And then down the line, maybe they would be up for doing some of the upgrades themselves. I totally get it and I definitely don't look down on anyone in this camp. This system is from a company called Leap PC, and they reached out asking me to take a look at one of their builds and review what they have to offer. So in this video, we're gonna do just that. Uh, but first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Antline Audio, creators of the Mod Mic, the boom microphones that can be attached to almost anything you want. Take your favorite pair of headphones, VR headset, or whatever else you fancy, find a flat surface to attach the magnetic base to, and instantly turn it into a sound recording peripheral. The Mod Mic comes in three different versions, the wireless, USB, and universal 3.5mm. All the audio in this pre-roll is actually being recorded by the Mod Mic Wireless, and this is all the way over in my echoey bathroom. This is raw and unedited, it hasn't been altered in any way, so this is the high quality sound that you can expect from Mod Mic. If you're interested in this or any of the other products that they have to offer, definitely check out the links in the description below. Uh, but other than that, back to the video. So the first thing I want to do is jump to the unboxing process to show the condition that this arrived in and my first impressions of it out of the box. Okay, so this is the computer as I received it, not double boxed or anything like that. There is one fragile care do not drop. I believe that might be the only one across all the packaging. But yeah, so I'm gonna open this up now and see if it got to me in one piece. So in the box we have, I guess a remote for the RGB light as well as the power cord, but there's also a, looks like a guide. Oh, this is, this is actually pretty cool. So it's a quick start guide and they made it look like one of the original like Nintendo, Super Nintendo era, kind of like booklets that usually come with the games. Uh, and it's actually pretty high quality too. So for the packaging itself, uh, it's just the styrofoam that came with the case, crumpled up paper on the sides of each of the panels, and the tempered glass. So it is packed with the expanding foam, which is what a lot of these companies do when they uh, ship fully built PCs to make sure nothing inside moves around, especially the graphics card, since that's pretty heavy. And in transit, if that's wiggling around too much with how much weight it has, it can rip out of the slot. Definitely want to make sure that stays in place. But, um, but we're gonna move this and reveal the system. Let's see, this comes out nicely. All right, so this all comes out without having to remove any of the parts, which is good. So removing the foam packets. I'm not gonna focus on specs right now because uh, I'll go over that later on in the video when I have everything listed out. I just wanna see what the build quality is like right out of the box. The cable management is actually really good. I'm not gonna touch this and I'm gonna get some good B-roll that looks a lot better than from this angle, but on the front side, cable management is done really well, actually. Yeah, I have zero complaints here and it looks like everything is in place. They actually did a really good job making use of all the cutouts and grommeted holes in this case. So this build does only have one drive in it and it's the M.2 drive, so that's, you know, cableless and it is in the front side there. So there's no like three and a half or two and a half inch drive back here. So here's the RGB control box for the two LED strips that we have in there. Uh, there's one below the motherboard and then one at the top side. All right, that's about it. Uh, just out of the box, there's no apparent damage. I think cable management looks good. So let me plug it in now and boot this up and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we initially turn it on. This is lit up really nicely with those LED strips actually. Yeah, you can see everything in the case, which if you put the glass back on, it's not a tinted glass, so. I think the white LEDs look really good just with the overall aesthetic of the color of the case. 
We're gonna change the different colors. Hey, there's green. All right, we're in. So this looks like a pretty fresh Windows install. Firefox is already pre-installed. Let me see if there's anything else that was added here. Looks like we have the drivers for the AMD graphics card. And aside from that, nothing else installed. So this is a clean, fresh Windows install, which is nice. There's no bloatware or anything like that. And let me actually check the BIOS real quick and we'll see what that is looking like. But on the Windows install side of things, uh, it looks good. This is a good fresh start. So just looking through the window, the memory is G Skill Rip Jaws rated at 3600 megahertz. So hopefully that profile is gonna be turned on. The XMP profile is activated. No overclock on the CPU at all. It is just uh, running at stock settings, but because it is a B450, you could do this on your own. Uh, if you want to, you probably could get a slightly higher all-core overclock. All the fans are just set to auto, and we're just gonna leave like that for the testing. All right, so BIOS looks good to go. So the PC was delivered safely in one piece and there were no obvious issues or damage. Now let's take a look quick at the specs. In this particular build, we've got a Ryzen 5 3600 rocking the stock Wraith cooler and it's paired with the ASRock Pro 4 B450M motherboard. Notice that this is a micro ATX board and it's in a mid-sized tower case. This can sometimes look a bit weird, but I think the placement of the LED strip in the gap works out really well. But this is just something that you might want to keep in mind depending on your preferences. There's 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Rip Jaws at 3600 megahertz CL16, an 8 gigabyte RX 5700 ADROC Challenger graphics card, a one terabyte Western Digital Blue NVMe SSD, an EVGA 650 watt 80 plus white power supply, and all this is enclosed by the Fractal Design Meshify C case. There's two non-addressable RGB strips that are controlled by remote control, and the system is running an activated retail copy of Windows 10 Home. I did go in specifically and check the status of the key to make sure it was a legitimate retail copy. That's kind of important because it's going to affect the cost analysis later on in the video. Before we dive into pricing though, I want to show the performance of this PC to give an idea of what it's capable of. To test the system, I left it at stock settings because I think that most people buying a pre-built system like this just want something that works right out of the box. Something that they don't have to go in and make any adjustments to the settings or tinker with anything like that. So stock is like the best representation of that. I tested this build against titles in both 1080 and 1440p as those would be the two most fitting resolutions for the spec. Uh, so let's check out the performance where you can see the utilization, the temperatures, and the frame rate all being monitored. Everything looks good so far. You know, the PC is well built. It performs just as expected. But now we're going to talk about what everyone cares the most about, pricing. On their website, Lee PC has pre-configured systems which start as low as $600 for their level 1 PCs and go as high as $3,000 for their level 8. These builds already have all the parts chosen for them. You just pick one that fits within your budget and that's it. 
All the builds are for the most part well balanced and make sense. I didn't see anything that really made me scratch my head, like there wasn't any obvious bad pairings of CPUs and GPUs where you would get really noticeable bottlenecks or anything like that. So that was really good to see. This system in particular is very similar to their level 4 build with a couple of modifications that can be chosen in the configure your own PC page. This one, configure as is, comes in at $1,341, and that's before shipping. I placed this exact build in my cart and went through the checkout, and shipped to my doorstep with FedEx that would cost a total of $1,421. I was not charged sales tax though, so that was nice. Now, right out of the gate, that is kind of expensive, especially for someone like me who can build his own computers and am familiar with the market and what you can get in a PC at different price brackets. I wanted to be fair though and not jump to conclusions, so I did a breakdown of everything within that price to see if they're trying to like cheat their customers anywhere or not, uh, or if this is a completely reasonable price, and this is what I found. Going to PC Part Picker, I built the exact same system and pulled the lowest price for each of the parts, and it came out to $1,100, which does include free shipping for all the individual parts as seen on the screen. So that right there is one benefit to building yourself, because shipping is usually free or dirt cheap on individual components, and it's the exact opposite for like a fully built system. However, doing this, I would have to pay taxes, which is a whopping 10.4% where I live, which in turn comes out to $1,214. So for me, it's $1,421 versus $1,214, which is basically a difference of $200 and some change. This is not an insignificant amount of money, so let's see what that $200 difference is really getting you with going with Leap PC. So we know that 80 of those dollars is due to the FedEx shipping, which from my own experience, that amount is spot on. I've shipped out several PCs before. It costs that much simply because of the size and the weight of the box. Now after that, it looks like what we have remaining is $120 for their services. That's procuring the parts, assembling the PC, installing Windows, updates, you know, doing the drivers. And this accounts also for the stress testing that they do on every build to minimize it arriving with like DOA parts or like prematurely failing on your end. This may not sound like a big deal, but consider this. If you're new to PC building and you ordered everything yourself and something comes dead on arrival, it can be a huge headache trying to pinpoint what part is actually causing the problem since most people likely won't have spare parts for every single component on hand so that they can you know, like swap one by one out to try to figure out which one or a couple components are dead. They also provide customer service and warranty, which on their website says they have a lifetime support policy and warranty for the computer so long as the failure is not due to like physical damage or like improper maintenance, use or mishandling. I think they're being really generous here because most companies I see usually give one maybe two years at max. I read through their warranty a couple of times just to make sure that there was any fine print that would cheat the customers out on this and I couldn't find anything like that. To me the warranty looks legit. Don't just take my word for it though, you can read it for yourself, I have it linked down below. Uh, but see if you can find anything that looks fishy or you know, like that could be misconstrued because I couldn't find any of that. So considering all of that, I think a $120 fee is perfectly reasonable and it's in the ballpark of what I've seen other custom builders charge. Like it's usually somewhere between like $100 to $150. And just working out the math, assuming that they're putting in like three to four hours of work into each build, you know, to set it up, to stress test it and prep it for shipping, that's $30 to $40 an hour, which is a pretty standard rate for how much professional services typically charge. That's like how much your plumber or electrician or car mechanic would charge you by the hour for labor. Now, with that said, there are a couple of things that I do want to address since my frugal nature will always be looking for ways to save money. The first is, with buying your own PC parts, you can often run into deals. That PC part picker list that we looked at earlier was just a snapshot in time, and all the prices on there were pretty much standard day-to-day -day prices, but nothing was really on sale. So if you're a deal hunter, you may be able to get that price down even further, but again, that takes extra effort and familiarity with the market, something that requires like a decent amount of time to do researching for, and it's not just a skill that can be picked up overnight. Like new and inexperienced builders definitely wouldn't be able to have that advantage. And the second thing I want to talk about is the Windows key. So the majority of people that I know are either running Windows unactivated, which is completely free, or they're using gray market keys, which are around $15. Because Leap PC has to install an OS on the build for it to be ready to go out of the box, and because they're a legitimate business and have to use genuine retail keys instead of these sketchy mass volume ones that are clearly not meant for resale, they have to charge you that $100 or so for it. 
I'm not gonna fault them for that because you know they've kind of got their hands tied here. Uh, however, these are things that they are competing against when you know it comes to a customer that is really on the fence between buying from them versus building on their own. So I think it's in Leap PC's best interest to find every avenue they can to offer the most attractive and competitive price that they can. It does look like they run sales on their website, so this is one way that they can make back some of the ground for the price difference, uh, especially during the holidays if they can run even bigger sales. So all in all, what's my final verdict? Well, I think Leap PC is legit and they're fair with their pricing. I don't think they're out to con buyers with excessive markups or build fees. Their pricing checks out from what I can see. It should have been obvious from the beginning of the video though that their target demographic is not the DIY builder. Instead, it's to people who want a quality system and are willing to pay a little bit extra for it to be built correctly and for it to be ready to go out of the box when it reaches them. I think a lot of people in our community really love to hate on pre-built systems, but what they don't realize is that pre-builds are a great gateway of bringing more people into our community. People who might otherwise never would have joined because they were too intimidated with building PCs. I think there's like a level of elitism and gatekeeping that is within the PC master race. This is something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about recently and I definitely have a lot more to say, but I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. So with that said, that's gonna wrap it up for my review. What are your thoughts on what Leap PC has to offer? And are you the type of person who would ever consider buying a pre-built or are you strictly like a DIY type of person? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure Leap PC is gonna be watching this video to get my feedback. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they thumb through the comments as well. So definitely drop any questions or feedback you have for them down there if you do have any. Um, but other than that, I just hope you enjoyed the video and found it either helpful or entertaining. I want to thank you all as always for watching and for supporting the channel. And yeah, I'll see you down in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.